Good morning, everybody. Great to see you here. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you making it. My name is David Marr. It's my good fortune to be the head of schools for Rolling Hills Prep, Renaissance, and Reach Elementary. It's great to have you spending time with us. Thank you so much for, for taking the time and spending a little bit of time. We ordinarily will be doing this on our beautiful campus in San Pedro. Uh, we would have the opportunity to take you around and show you some classrooms and show you athletic fields and, and, uh, and really get a chance to interact. Unfortunately, with the current situation, we're reduced to doing this in a virtual environment. However, we thought it was really, really important that this time of the year, we didn't cancel these opportunities to tell prospective applicants, prospective families a little bit more about REACH, Rolling Hills Prep, and Renaissance Schools. So thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a, a variety of people to talk to you today about different aspects of our campus and of our student life program. So we're looking forward to getting to them. Uh, on a normal in a normal time, we would all have really nice haircuts <laughs> and really good tans and all those things. Uh, we, we thank you for your forgiveness and thank you for your patience. Um, so I want to walk through a couple of things today with you as just to start. And one of those is just a normal day at Rolling Hills Prep and Renaissance Schools. So Rolling Hills Prep has been around for 40 years. Next year is our 40th anniversary. We were founded as a rigorous college prep independent school with a soul. And about 12 years ago, we had a chance to move on to this beautiful campus when the US Navy pulled out of San Pedro. We have about 20 acres on PV Drive North. Um, about 15 years ago, we were one of the first independent schools to acknowledge that not all kids have the same approaches to learning. We created Renaissance School for bright kids that learn differently. We were a two campus, two schools, one campus model for 15 years. And then last fall, we had the opportunity to start REACH Elementary School for younger kids that also are diagnosed with learning differences, mild autism, and other challenges that, that led them to leave a more traditional school setting for our opportunities. Last fall, uh, we would be doing a virtual, inter virtual session and taking a walk around because we have rolling admissions. Our priority admissions ended in March, and now throughout the summer and into September 15th, we'll have rolling admissions where there's opportunities for us to find more students and more families for our community. Um, as you walk through the gates of our campus, there are four pillars and literally and figuratively, these underlie everything we do. Disciplined minds, creative spirits, healthy bodies and sound character. You'll hear more about that shortly uh, from some of our staff members. A typical day begins with morning meeting where we might meet as a whole community, or we might meet just as an upper school, or another day we meet as just as a middle school. It's an opportunity to hear senior speeches, to hear updates on events that might have happened over the weekend or are coming up that week. Opportunities for athletics captains to talk about how their team was doing. Um, it's also, these are followed by our block schedule. And our block schedule, uh, they're, eight, they're 70 minute classes. And we believe that these are offered students and opportunities to more deeply get into the learning that were, that's taking place. So our 70 minute rotating schedule offers us the chance to do full labs, debates, projects, and more. For our athletic teams, there are 14 athletic teams across the middle and upper school. Uh, they run throughout the year over three seasons. We have a no cut policy. Although we've won state championships and we've won CIF championships, if you're interested in playing a sport for the first time, that's an opportunity. So you might have never played volleyball before, and yet on ninth grade, you can start off on a varsity team and play it all four years. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about how education's looked since March 15th, when we came off of campus and started distance learning. Uh, it's been a challenge for everyone. 1.5 billion students around the world are out of school at this time. So on a very short notice, um, our administrative team, our academic team, and our senior leadership team uh, worked out a way that we would use, utilize Google Classroom and Google Meet and continue our, off, our off-campus experience in a distance learning format. We decided it was very important for the sake of normalcy to hang on to, the, to our current schedule. And so our school meets in classes virtually on the same schedule we would have met if we'd been on campus. We found that's been very, very helpful for students 
in this age of uncertainty to have that to be able to rely on. We also have students meeting in clubs, meeting activities, meeting with their advisory groups. We even have lunch bunches that have been meeting. Last week we had a virtual STEM expo. We had a week long arts week that was all virtual this year and a middle school science fair yesterday that was virtual as well. And all those experiences we've tried to mimic or even enhance the experience that kids would have in order to keep that sense of normalcy. We think it's done well. We think we're one of the premier schools in the South Bay that's been able to move to distance learning. Uh, and we look forward to leveraging that uh, for students that have been really successful in this format. We've begun having discussions about the fall now that the conversations about the, the numerous events such as commencement, closing ceremonies, athletic award ceremonies and, ever, and others have been worked out. We've started to have conversations about what education is going to look like in the fall. We don't have all the answers, but we do have plan A's, plan B's and plan C's about amended schedules, hybrids of distance learning and on campus learning, social distancing on classrooms and most importantly, doing whatever we can to make sure that our students and our community are healthy in the current COVID environment. So with that, I want to turn it over to Naomi Pollock, our Associate Head for Academics, to talk a little bit more about the specifics around academics. Once again, if you have questions or concerns or issues that you want to bring up at the end, we'll have a question and answer period. Thank you again for your patience. Thank you for your interest in Rolling Hills Prep, Renaissance and Reach Elementary. And we look forward to talking to you, hopefully on campus at some time soon. Naomi. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to join you today to share with you an overview of the middle school and upper school curriculum offered at RHP and Renaissance schools. I will begin by discussing middle school. I will begin by discussing middle school where our goal is to provide, provide a broad range of academic experiences for students to build a foundation for their successes in upper school. Students take classes in English, world language or English language learning in the case of our international students, history and social sciences, math, science, visual and performing arts, physical and health education, and design. Unlike some other schools, we do not consider any of these subjects as being elective or less academically important than others, and all are treated as solid academic pursuits. In Renaissance Middle School, grades five, six, and seven classes are self-contained with a homeroom teacher and a full-time associate teacher or learning specialist providing instruction in the majority of the subjects with the exceptions of art, physical education, and design. This approach allows for a focus on supporting students in their developing essential executive functioning and self-regulatory skills in these grade levels that correspond to important developmental milestones. Renaissance grade eight also has a dedicated homeroom teacher and learning specialist who deliver instruction in English and social studies and students begin to prepare for their transition to upper school by attending classes with single subject specialists for science, math, art, physical and health education and design. Similarly, students in RHP middle school study in the same eight course groups that I mentioned previously and each course is taught by a teacher who is a subject area specialist. RHP Middle School, this is very exciting, is in the midst of its candidacy for the International Baccalaureate Middle Years Program, and that's abbreviated as MYP. It's a globally recognized inquiry-based curricular framework that emphasizes students developing skills in critical thinking, communication, and learning how to learn through approaches to learning skills. Units that are taught highlight interdisciplinary connections across the subjects and emphasize essential understandings and enduring concepts. This program will be actively delivered to grades six and seven next year, and one additional grade level will be added per year until the program is fully established in grades six through 10. Now I will move on to the upper school where our program is truly unique because this is where the two schools merge and the predominant pathway for students in RHP and Renaissance is to attend partnered courses together. In addition to the long list of partnered course options, the option also exists for Renaissance students to enroll in Renaissance exclusive courses where beneficial for them. Academic supports are provided to students in Renaissance and in RHP through the Academic Center for Excellence, which we refer to as ACE. And students in those programs receive three learning support blocks per week where they work with their assigned learning specialists. All students in RHP and Renaissance also benefit from the daily check-ins with their advisors and weekly X and Y flexible study blocks where they are provided with time in their schedules to work on assignments and seek out additional guidance and support from subject area teachers. 
While there are clear graduation requirements in place, Upper School provides ample opportunities for students to identify their interests and passions and pursue them in depth before graduating. We offer honors level study in many courses, as well as 14 advanced placement courses across the subjects of English, history and social sciences, math, science, and the arts. Students whose interests lie in the subjects of math and science, global studies and world languages, and the arts may also apply to become candidates for one of our specialized diploma programs in each of those areas. Participation in these specialized diploma programs is an excellent way for our students to build skills and experiences that allow them to stand out during the college applications process and help ensure their success in their post-secondary studies. I am not just an academic leader here in the school, but I'm also a parent, so I can also vouch from that side that my two children who've been in grades six and seven and nine and 10 in these last two years have thrived in this school. And I hope that this overview I've provided with you is gives you a sense of the wonderful programs we have in place to support your, chil your children or child. And to tell you more about what we do beyond the academic realm, I now introduce Mr. Justin Flamini, who will serve as the director of Rolling Hills Prep next year. Thank you so much, Naomi. Welcome everyone. You've heard a lot about our academic and curricular offerings here, and I really just want to take that a little bit further today by discussing how rigorous, how our rigorous and challenging offerings are expanded upon through educationally sound initiatives that produce healthy, safe, and engaged members of our community. Many of the individuals that are going to follow me in speaking with you today will expand on their specific areas of strength within our whole child educational philosophy. But really, as a former government economics teacher, it's particularly important to me that Rolling Hills Prep students enter the next chapter of their lives with a sense of giving and selflessness. As a requirement for graduation, each Rolling Hills Prep student must complete 120 hours of service learning, where each student is able to give back to their local community, offer themselves for the betterment of others in individualized and unique ways. Our students are able to personalize their volunteer efforts with the goal of identifying ways to give back that are rewarding for all involved and something that can be continued well beyond high school even. We have various other service-based initiatives such as Huskies with Heart, as you see here, and our basketball team's basketball closet where clothing is collected for the homeless on Skid Row. Even our teachers feel the selflessness in the air as they spend the afternoon riding go-karts with a lucky student or leading parents through a relaxing painting session with one of our premier art teachers, Ms. Rudolph. Our clubs and activities, they offer students a plethora, a plethora of options to engage with areas of interest in hands-on and creative environments. Whether it's reinforcing strong character and service with traditional clubs such as National Honor Society or Associated Student Body, or whether it's taking advantage of the ever-changing economy we live in by joining our robotics team or demoing a skill at your own booth in our STEM Expo, you will really struggle to find a club that does not feel like the perfect fit. We offer over 20 clubs here at Rolling Hills Prep, and every year I've been a member of this campus, I have seen numerous students honored in publications such as South Bay Magazine's 20 Under 20 for some of the very talents that they develop and showcase in these clubs and organizations. It's really hard to believe, as David mentioned, how much we've celebrated in the last three weeks even. We hosted our annual STEM Expo, Middle School Science Fair, and then Art Show complete with a drive-in display scheduled for the fall. As part of this whole student philosophy, we really want to ensure that students graduate with a strong sense of accountability. We end our weekly Husky pledge every week with, and I will respect myself and others. Here at Rolling Hills, honestly, our mission is to see that we produce successful, contributing, hardworking, and respectful students, individuals who will be a benefit to themselves and the future communities that they'll call home. Thank you for your time here, and I do want to introduce our English teacher extraordinaire and, in, and head of ASB, Ms. Alyssa Matuchniak. Thank you so much, Justin. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us today. As Justin said, I am the middle school uh, English teacher at Rolling Hills Prep. I have been working alongside Naomi Pollock and my own personal mentor on campus, Cheryl Beschke, to help implement the incoming NYP program for the middle school. And I so look forward to someday meeting your kid and working with them in my very own classroom. 
I want to spend some time today talking to you a little bit about what the middle school experience on our campus really looks like. Middle school is kind of a funky time. They're, your kids are no longer in that highly guided childhood experience of elementary school, and yet they've not quite found their total independence that they will eventually achieve once they reach high school. And so in that sense, middle school is a very transitionary time. And it's a time that our school likes to focus on increased self-advocacy, ownership of learning, and bridging that gap between the youth of their elementary years and the eventual maturity of their high school years. One of the beautiful things about uh, the middle school experience at Rolling Hills Prep is that all of our teachers, staff, faculty are really focused on balance balance between structured supports from our teachers, collaborative engagement and inquiry with their classmates, and independent production and creation of their own learning products to demonstrate what they've learned over the course of a given year. In middle school, your students will find a lot more choice available to them in terms of the way that they like to learn best, the way they choose to demonstrate what they have learned in any given class, suddenly they're in a place where they're able to take that ownership and move it forward step by step. We're also interested in the middle school years in developing your students' ability to reflect on their own learning, reflect on who they are becoming, not just as a student, but as a person who embodies the four pillars of our school. And we do this with ongoing metacognition and reflection time, with one-on-one -on -one conferences between students and their teachers, with small group focused instructional time, and so much more. Another amazing benefit of our middle school is the small intimate classes that we're able to provide for your kids. Uh, most uh, middle school classes are capped at about 16. I can safely say that for my own middle school experience as an English teacher, I have uh, my largest class has 15 kids. My smallest class this year has a total of seven. This provides a lot more opportunities for students to create their own culture and community of learning within the classroom that they get to have more of a say in creating with openness, honesty, vulnerability, and their own approaches to inquiry. These small class sizes also provide students with more opportunities to build and share their voices in a supportive environment. Sometimes in a classroom of 40 kids, it's hard for any one individual student to make themselves known, to get the help that they need, or even to ask an interesting question or share a thought uh, that might be a new way of looking at something. With our smaller class sizes, kids have more of a stake in their own learning process and they have more say in the culture and environment that they create in any given room that they are sitting in. Lastly, overall in our middle school program, we have a huge emphasis on social development through our advisory program. Each year in middle school, your student will have a different advisor and this is considered to be their kind of first point of contact. This is how our middle school community stays clued in to important events that are happening both on and off campus. And it's also a way for the students to engage in the creation and implementation of campus activities, clubs, community building movements, and so much more. Advisory is really a space for students to explore social emotional learning strategies and tools. They're making a huge leap moving from elementary school where one teacher sort of guided them through each step of their day into a space where now they suddenly have a lot more of that responsibility. And sometimes taking on that much responsibility can be stressful and can be scary. With advisory in place, we really work with your kids in a small group setting to help them use such tools such as mindfulness and deep breathing, journaling and communication with one another to help them feel supported as they go through this transition. We also work on them with such things as study skills and time management strategies to prepare them for the increased um, challenges and in, uh, academic rigor that they will see once they get into upper school. We're also very interested in using middle school advisory as a space to openly begin uh, a college preparedness route. Even in my own advisory, I can say that I've been talking with our students about their four-year plans for high school, as well as brainstorming about future interests and in careers and service. Um, I want to now hand things over to our Director of Student Life, Christina Morse, who's going to give you a little bit more information about what student life and activities on campus look like. So with that, Christina, take it away. 
Thank you, Melissa. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. I just love hearing the passionate way that Alyssa speaks to our community. And I was just telling her last week, I wish that my own sons had her in middle school. Gosh, what a difference that would have made. Um, so in the area of student life, you know, on and off campus is broad sweeping, includes many areas um, that I'll already shared with you. But the focus is really on social emotional learning. And it is at the heart and soul of what we do every single day with intention. The student life team includes our full-time school counselor our, and our diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinators who collaborate closely and seamlessly with each grade level across both schools and with each division, both middle and upper school. Some of the work that our diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinators provide is workshops during the advisory times that we talked about with you on Mondays. Um, and some of the topics might include equity and equality, implicit bias or multiculturalism, and then for our older students, uh, microaggressions and even privilege, kind of leaning into those hard discussions and unpacking that together. We have both a faculty committee to discuss programming as well as student leadership opportunities and involvement through the Advocates for Diversity, which is our, one of our many student clubs. And each year, our, we have a school-wide diversity symposium. And um, every year, a theme is chosen. And this year, we had focused on learning styles. And we were able to kick it off with an amazing guest speaker, writer, activist, uh, Jonathan Mooney. And he shared his own story of growing up and learning differently in the South Bay. And it uh, was amazing, because we had lines of students um, that wanted to talk with him after he spoke to ask questions and to really just connect with him because I know even with my own kids, you know, learning differently can be a challenge and they might feel um, off-putting to their peers, but not on our campus. It is just relevant and just normal because we are each one of us so different. Um, other ways I wanted to share our students are entrenched in social emotional learning is through our peer mentors program. We have 12 upper school peer mentors who have been trained on supporting their peers. And this year, our focus was on distance learning um, throughout the past two months with small weekly groups for our middle school students. We have uh, a built-in opportunity on campus. We've got our upper school students and they are the best um, and the best folks to really support our middle school students. So we use that uh, and we use them in that way as well. We, of course, offer social emotional counseling for our students, either individually and in small groups through our school counselor. We do have interns um, also from the USC Graduate School of School Counseling. Group topics for students may include friendship skills, conflict resolution, and then for our older students, stress management as well. We have an amazing and wonderful parent association that I wanted to share with you, make sure you know that. Each parent is automatically included in this community. We have grade level chairs uh, for every grade and they communicate seamlessly with our school. We also have a wellness liaison within the parent association and together and collaboratively, we um, discuss the planning of wellness speakers as well as our parent book clubs. Um, and lastly, I can also attest um, to the beautiful work, the rigor of Rolling Hills Prep and Renaissance, and the soul that, that we talk about, because my own son graduated recently with the class of 2019, and he has landed in a wonderful college community, and he felt just so ready because of the support that he received. That he received. So please know all that we do, I do believe, is with intention, and student wellness uh, is our top priority. I'd like to introduce you to someone that can speak more directly about student needs um, is Jennifer Stroud. She has been with our campus for six years and is our incoming director of Renaissance School. Jennifer. Thank you, Christina. Um, it's so nice to see all of you here. And um, at Renaissance School, we really believe that celebrating our cognitive and cultural diversity through the creation of individualized pathways for each student addresses their passions, their talents, needs, and 
Um, this all helps them become agile thinkers, active community members, and confident, independent, lifelong learners. At Renaissance School, we really teach the process of learning. Um, we teach students how to approach school, how to tackle small and large problems. Um, wrapped up in that is executive functioning, which would be organization, planning, task completion, time management. Uh, we really work hard with the school, with the with the students within their curriculum in, in embedding self-awareness and with that self-advocacy, we teach them st study strategies and various approaches to learning. Um, outside of academics, we go way beyond and address the needs of the whole child. So it is really a cornerstone of the Renaissance program to embed social emotional thinking, perspective taking and self-regulation into the classes and, and their support blocks. We teach kids um, metacognitive strategies. So metacognition is thinking about how we think, um, really unpacking how do I best learn? How do I think? How, what are my strengths? Um, and we also coach kids within life skills and career skills and beyond the academic world, uh, the academic sphere. Um, our focus at Renaissance is to have students fall back in love with learning or stoke their passion for subjects that they're already taken with. So we really meet students where they're at in their learning. Um, sometimes that means meeting them where they're at within their um, math trajectory or their, where they're at as far as reading comprehension and building them up from there. Uh, we strongly believe that a 10 to 1 positive to negative feedback model within the classroom to reinforce students' strengths really empowers students to feel confident in their learning, confident in their abilities, and, um, and we really, really believe heavily in um, also having a restorative justice model within all of our discipline and really unpacking um, choices that students make and having that self-reflective process. Our learning support provided at the school always allows students to get the lion's share, if not all, of their school or homework done within the day. And that really gives students and parents the opportunity for you guys to have your family time back at home when after school in the past might have been a, a contentious effort where you're battling with your kid to complete their homework. Renaissance has student learning and student support built into the day. So really, once your child comes home, you, you get that one-to-one -one family time back with them and it alleviates some of those pressures at home. Renaissance Middle School, um, in the middle school classes at Renaissance, teachers um, with the aid of a learning specialist are teaching mostly in self-contained classrooms. Embedded within this curriculum um, of the classes are social thinking, executive functioning, comprehension building, advocacy skills. So we may be teaching a book but within that book, we're asking students to do perspective taking. What would that other character in this novel view this character's like decision making or behavior? Uh, what kind of thought bubbles might that pop up um, for the people in the room when someone starts to, you know, jump up and down and scream. So we really build into the curriculum in the Renaissance Middle School, this social thinking, executive functioning, comprehension building. Teachers and learning specialists, specialists are constantly prompting students with questions to stimulate them to think about how they think, to encourage perspective taking and encourage that self-reflection. And with learning specialists placed within the classroom, we can offer a much more support in the moment. So we assist students through their learning processes. We can unstick students. Um, sometimes, you know, 
students can perseverate on something or feel like they can't do it, we can, you know, unstick them in the moment. And this can be an incredible anxiety reducer for students that in the past have been overwhelmed within class. In Renaissance Upper School, uh, students take a combination of classes taught by Renaissance teachers, which are Renaissance exclusive classes, but then they're also co-seated with Rolling Hills prep teachers. Um, Renaissance upper school courses continue to follow that middle school model of scaffolding and support within academics and embedding the social thinking, advocacy, and metacognitive skills within their coursework. And upper school students usually take a blend of Renaissance courses and RHP courses that are co-seated. Each student in the upper school are assigned a learning specialist, which um, not only helps with their learning, but is also that coach on campus and is off often supplementary to the advisor. So Renaissance upper school students really have this benefit of having both their learning specialist and their advisor being their point person on campus, really looking out for them and supporting them in all sorts of areas, not just academic, but also in that social, emotional, uh, you name it. Um, all upper school students have support blocks woven into their schedule in which they can work on classwork or homework with the assistance of their learning specialist. And additionally, in upper school renaissance, we work in tandem starting in the ninth grade with the college, in, college counseling office to find the right college or career fit for students. Um, I think one of the questions that I'm most often asked is how Renaissance and students in RHP interact and co-mingle. Um, in the middle school and upper school, um, both in sports, special events, clubs, lunch, break, outdoor ed, all of this is um, extremely commingled. Renaissance students and RHP students are our friends across the board. Um, they're out there running around. And I think what makes both Renaissance and Rolling Hills Prep so special is that our entire combined community celebrates diversity, including neurodiversity. And it is our differences that make us such a rich, rich and robust community. Um, with that being said, I'm going to introduce Carol Bernstein. She's the Director of Enrollment, and she has a couple words for you. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, you can see that we are one very, very vibrant community, um, soon to be three schools on one campus. But we have, um, as, as, we, as the phrase has been um, said many times, we are academically rigorous with a soul. And that's one of the things that drew me to this campus. Um, it is one of the warmest communities I've ever worked in. And from students to parents to our amazing faculty and our talented um, administrators. We hope you'll join us. And um, I want to just introduce Shannon Kitani. I don't know where she is on your screen, but Shannon, if you can wave. Shannon and I are your admission team, and she's my right hand. Uh, she is the person who will be coordinating any of the work uh, that you send to us. We, she will be helping you with the online application and uh, is a big part of the admission committee. Uh, so I do want to say that we are still accepting applications and will continue to do so over the next uh, couple of weeks. I do encourage families who I see some of you who have already um, been in the who are in the process who may be thinking about applying and I thank you for that. But if you're if you're considering us, please fill out your application online as soon as you can. And the reason for that is we know that schools are going to be closing soon um, in some form or another and we do need letters of recommendation from current teachers. So um, that is a big part of our uh, process and uh, by contacting teachers now you'll be able to get that to us in due time. We have um, openings in most of our um, in most of our classes. So I know I saw a question about that. 
we are still taking applications for now in every single class. So um, with an emphasis on middle school. So if you have a middle schooler and are interested in, in looking at us, please, please feel free to contact us. Um, the application process is uh, a wholesome and whole child process. We're looking at everything. So we're looking at the application. We're looking at the recommendations, as I mentioned. We're also, we take time to do a parent student interview and you will be uh, meeting with me here in my home office. And um, I will take time to, to talk with your child uh, at length and then talk to you too about any questions that you have about um, the school, the process, the, um, the community. I do want to say that because of COVID-19, we are relaxing some of our, rec our requirements. For those of you who see the ISSE, -E -E -E, the Independent School Entrance Exam, as one of our requirements, we are going to be relaxing that uh, for the next couple of weeks because uh, it's difficult to take that test now. And we will work with you on what type of um, standardized testing we will take instead. Uh, another part of our job uh, is financial aid. We have, we give out about $2 million, over $2 million in financial assistance to families who qualify based on completing the parent's financial statement. And that's through the student services um, support program. Um, most independent schools use this service and we have a financial aid committee that will review your application and take a look and see if indeed you qualify. And our financial aid awards can be anything from $1,500 to almost full need, uh, depending on the circumstance of the family. And every family must qualify or actually um, uh, apply each year for financial aid. I do want to mention that we have limited financial um, aid resources still. So we are still taking applications and we will continue to process those throughout the summer. I really appreciate everybody joining us and taking time out of your day. Thank you so very much for your interest in our schools. Um, as uh, Shannon and Carol mentioned, you, you, we'd love to have you continue with the application process. If there's any questions along the way, feel free to reach out to Shannon and Carol um, through their email address and, and we'd be glad. And if there are any things that's still uncertain or unclear, we'd be glad to help clear them up for you. We look forward to a very, very robust fall. I know that a lot of our students and faculty and administrators are really, really looking forward to getting back uh, and seeing each other and being connected. And we hope you'll be part of that community. Thank you so much, everybody. We really appreciate it. Have a great day. Go Huskies.